the plane ticket came and I got on my first plane ride and went to Chicago. And then the first night, um, first we went to the club and did a, our uh, sound check rehearsal. And as I'm walking out, there's a guy at the bar and he says, hey, um, hi, I'm Kenny Burrell. And I was like, man, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. He says, man, you're really cool. I've never seen a Chinese piano player before. <laughs> we go back to the hotel, get our dinner, come back to the club, and we're playing the show. And this lady just starts wandering out on stage, right? Our roadie uh, ran up and he was going to uh, grab her and throw her off the stage. And Byron said, no, no, that's Flora Purim. And so she sat in and then um, another guy came to sit in and um, he was a drummer and his name was Steve Cobb. And like this is guy um, who played on the records with Ramsey Lewis and he Later, he ended up being the drummer, but at that time, um, if Ricky had left in between the time that I went home to wait for my plane ticket, and they had some, another guy was playing. So Ricky, at that time, Quincy pulled him out of Roy's band to play with the Brothers Johnson. And so that was the beginning of Ricky's journey, because you know Ricky played with Michael Jackson, Phil Collins, Steely Dan, Byron played with Luther Vandross, George Duke, you know, Santana, the Crusaders. So all these guys, like Roy's band was kind of like an incubator for like people who would, who would step up to some, you know, other things. And it was for me too. And so I get off the stage, I'm all, you know, adrenaline is all high, and I go up to the dressing room. I'm the first one in the dressing room. And Donnie Hathaway is sitting there. And I'm like, man, I was like, dear Donnie Hathaway. He's like, is it all right if I can be in here with you all? I was like, are you kidding? Dear God, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like God is here. So that was my first night on the road. Wow. And so it, the, everything from that point on was all like, Wow, you Just know. Just kept on coming. Yeah. After Chicago, mm -hmm. tell me, when did you start traveling outside of the U.S.? How old were you when that happened? Um, I didn't... Roy never left the U.S. while I was with him. Mm -hmm. um, so How long were you with him? I was with him for two years. Seems okay. Uh, the first time I left uh, the U.S., I was with Patti LaBelle. And uh, we went to Paris and London. Yeah. And that was a riot. And from Roy Ayers, you met Patti LaBelle? No, from Roy Ayers, um, uh, I was recruited to play with Ashford and Simpson. Okay, is that um, And um, is that where Patti LaBelle met you? Um, no, I Patti had seen me. We were on uh, Soundscape together with R Roy Ayers and Patti LaBelle on the same TV show. So I had met. Uh, her musicians at that time. I met a, a drummer named Billy Johnson. And Billy was from Dexter Wansel's band. And then he was also playing with Noel Pointer. And Noel, um, so he would come up to New York. To, uh, he was from Philadelphia. So Patty's band was uh, Philadelphia based. And so was Dexter Wansel, Grover Washington. Patty um, was forming a new band. And so uh, she hired Billy. And then uh, the guitarist was uh, Ron Smith, and they were looking for a keyboard player, and so uh, Billy and Ron recommended me. So I went down to audition, and then I ended up getting the job. Uh, actually, there's a story here. Uh, I was in LA producing my sister's band, and I was waiting to go to the first rehearsal of Patti LaBelle. And so a um, phone call came for me, and it was uh, Bud Ellison, he was Patty's um, uh, musical director. And he said, yeah, what we've done is you're gonna be replacing the horn section and then playing uh, keyboards. And so we have, we have everything written out. And I was like, um, I need to tell you something, I'm not a great reader. And he said, you're not a great reader. We'll hire people who can't read, you know, so forget it. And I was like, oops, okay. 
So I was kind of down. So I had a girlfriend in Nashville. I went to visit my girlfriend. And nobody knew where it was, right? And then finally, somebody tracked me down and, and said, um, uh, you have to get to Philadelphia right away. Because when they heard what Bud said, um, they said, what? Huh? You, you fired him before, you know, he's, they, they're like, they, he's the baddest keyboard player you can find. And so, you know, they were panicking because nobody knew where I was. So when I got there, I think everything was great. 